Matthew Bowling is a high school athlete from Texas that has been crushing records in sprinting. But why is he so much faster than everyone else? Most people would say genetics, and they'd be right. Our body has tens of thousands of genes that determine how every single molecule in our body functions. These genes are acted upon through gene expression. The thing about gene expression is it requires certain nutrients to happen. So you might have the best genetics in the world, but without the proper vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids in your diet, you'll never live up to that genetic potential. These nutrients are specific to animal foods and have been prized by our ancestors for thousands and thousands of years, all of human history, and for good reason. These people knew the properties of animal foods and that they are the building blocks of human life. It is only now with our modern lifestyle, agriculture, access to plant foods that we no longer have adequate animal nutrition in our diets. If you've noticed the presence of African American athletes in sports, it's because their genetics are closer to their indigenous ancestors that were following these diets. The further we step away from our natural diet high in animal foods, the closer we get to agriculture and plant-based diets, the shorter we become, the less physically strong, less human. Humans are supposed to be essentially perfect physical beings. When you look at any animal in nature, of course you have, you know, different species and variances of how animals look. You know, certain animals are different colors, but you don't see dogs wearing glasses. You don't see dogs wearing braces. You don't see, you know, dogs having miscarriages and their babies dying of cancer at two months old. That doesn't happen with animals in nature because they are following their diets. Humans are supposed to be the same way. Humans from a certain part of the world are supposed to be very similar looking with slight variances in their facial structure. And we'll look at some tribes later and we will notice that. But people in the Netherlands, the Dutch, are very, very tall. Uh, Italy has a much shorter average stature. You know, I mean, Frankie Boy is walking around at five foot eight, and half the girls in New York City are taller than him. Do you think that's to blame genetics or to blame the heavily grain-based diet that Italians have been following for thousands and thousands of years, whereas Dutch people still have a very high animal food presence in their diet? You might have also noticed in some of these African athletes, especially NBA and NFL players, they tend to have certain facial characteristics. Wide faces, symmetrical lips, perfect teeth. If you look up the New York Giants roster, literally half of these guys have this perfect facial structure reminiscent of our ancestors. Uh, this is also very apparent in some more popular athletes like LeBron James and Deontay Wilder. Matthew Bowling is no exception here. He has a very high level of physical development. His father likely did as well, uh, judging by the width of his face and teeth. But his brother, uh, who's above Matthew here, doesn't seem to be as fortunate in that aspect likely getting less nutrients as he is the second child. Before this video, many of you might have believed that these facial characteristics were specific to African Americans, but as we see in Matthew Bowling, this simply isn't true, and we can demonstrate this with any single indigenous group there is. Here we have the Maasai, an African tribe known for subsisting largely off of cattle meat and milk. Note the well-developed lips, perfect teeth, here we have nomadic children from a province in China. Similar, large, developed, symmetrical lips, and really perfect faces. This is a Native American man. Note the broad, symmetrical face, well-developed lips. Here we have a First Nation Alaskan. Same, symmetrical facial features. And a group of South Sea Islanders on literally another part of the planet. All of these people demonstrated very similar physical development uh, with their other tribe members. 
the variance was in facial width and height. Generally speaking, the more nutrition during early stages of life, such as pregnancy and breastfeeding, the wider the person's face will be. And the more nutrition that the person has through the childhood and teenage years, the taller and larger the person will be. This is why we see tall people with not symmetrical facial features and non-optimal development. A lot of this actually has to do with a modern soy formula and breastfeeding and unnatural diets. And there are also many hormonal systems that are developed during these very early stages of life. So it makes sense in why we see a trend in athletes with these wide facial characteristics. You know, if their face is developing properly, they have a bunch of hormonal glands and organ systems that are developing properly. And when your hormones develop properly, it's speculative that your testosterone will be higher, your adrenal glands will function better, and you'll just be a more physically powerful human being. But how do we achieve this genetic potential? Uh, it's fairly simple, being in touch with nature. Human nature has always been to subsist off of hunting animals and being out in the sun. All of the nutrients your body needs can be obtained from a variety of animal foods, whether it's fin fish, shellfish, beef, pork, chicken, doesn't matter what the source of animal nutrition is, granted it is a high quality source and will have all the nutrients your body needs. This combined with vitamin D3 from the sun are the significant factors that everyone is really missing during developmental stages of life. And it makes sense, you know, almost every single person in America right now doesn't get enough animal foods and doesn't get enough sunlight growing up. So it makes sense to why we see these rare occurrences of tall, beautiful, physically impressive people. Once this genetic potential is achieved, we can assume that there are other genetic factors uh, such as muscle fiber type. But when you perform a certain type of physical activity, you actually activate either slow or fast twitch muscle fibers and prolonged training and sprinting over many, many years would build up your fast twitch muscles and the genetic potential for that fast twitch muscle percentage might play a large role in separating those top percentage of athletes. And although genes can be expressed to some degree and change during people's lifetimes, uh, I believe it's a result of what activities your ancestors were doing as well. That's why certain African tribes are better distance runners than others. And it's also why Italian stonemasons are able to work all day carving marble. You know, their genes essentially adjusted over generations to specialize in that work. The main thing that we can't overlook is the skeletal development. If you have the level of skeletal and musculature that Matthew Bowling has due to your genetic development achieving near what would be optimal, no one can replicate those mechanics if they don't have the equipment for the job. You know, the length of his arms, his torso, his legs, his musculature, you know, how his body has expressed his hormones to be. You know, maybe he has a very high natural testosterone level. Maybe his adrenals function better than everyone else. There are so many factors correlating to physical development that are hypotheticals as to why he's better than everyone else. It's more likely a combination of these things as opposed to one of them specifically, but it's definitely interesting to think about and also unfortunate how, you know, humans are supposed to be a certain way and most of us aren't. I have personally had double jaw surgery. My bone structure is more feminine uh, because I was fed a soy formula. You know, on one hand, we don't have to survive in nature anymore. On the other hand, we are only a fraction of what we are supposed to be. I mean... It's really sad that there's so much money invested in people being unhealthy, and I really don't know if that's ever going to be fixed. Uh, I really don't think it's ever going to happen, but thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, if you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and if you can, uh, share it with some of your friends. If you guys would like to support me further, uh, please just watch some of my other videos. Uh, recently, I have launched Frankie's Free Range Meat. 
My goal being to provide you guys with high quality, nutrient dense animal foods. So if you would like you or your children to run like Matthew Bowling, definitely check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com and see what products we have available. We do have non-perishable products uh, for international people as well. Again, thank you guys for joining me today and enjoy the rest of the week.